In old Antioch, in what is now modern day Turkey, there lived a philosopher and supposed sorcerer who went by the name of Cyprian, a native of Carthage in the middle of the 3rd century. He and his family lived in service of the Greek god Apollo, and as legends have it, he was sent by his parents to learn dark magic and sorcery. Supposedly, some accounts, all of which don't appear to have any supporting historical evidence, state that Cyprian would be sent to Mount Olympus, where he was taught a manner of dark arts, including demonic transformation, control of the weather, summoning and spreading of disease, as well as to converse with demons. It's said that here on Mount Olympus, he encountered legions of demons, perhaps even the devil himself, who gave him counsel on how best to spread his evil message. Of course, Mount Olympus was home to the Greek gods in Greek mythology, so it is possible that the demons in which the legend states Cyprian visited were actually Christian interpretation of the Greek gods. Many of the legends of Cyprian's dabbling of the occult are exactly that, legends in which were likely spawned by Christians at the time who saw any gods other than their own as pagan gods and or illusions presented by Satan to lead a man away from their one true god. After learning all that he could from the sorcerers on Mount Olympus and the demons who were said to have gathered there under his own summoning, he moved to the city of Argos where he served the goddess Juno in order to learn from her priests in more occult practices he would eventually move to Sparta, where according to legends, was able to raise the dead from graves and even communicate with them, using spells to get them to speak. Naturally, we can assume that this is more Christian propaganda from that time period, and without any concrete proof as to any of this happening, we can safely assume that the storytellers throughout the ages have embellished this story, perhaps to push their own religious agenda. But it still makes for an interesting account of a man who would later give away all of these incredible powers in order to serve the Christian God. The Saint Justine of Antioch would later come to the attention of Cyprian, who by now was said to have something of a reputation for his magic. A suitor who was trying to court Justina had grown tired of her constant rejections. Justina claimed she wished to remain a virgin and pure in the eyes of God. At his wit's end, the suitor approached Cyprian and asked him to use some sort of charm spell that would see Justina fall in love with him. Up for the challenge, Cyprian agreed. In some versions, she is seen being consumed by lustful thoughts, as Cyprian's magic works to fill her mind with temptation. In other versions, the devil himself manifests and works at Cyprian's command to convince Justina into giving in to her desires. But in all the versions, Justina overcomes Cyprian's magic and is able to stay true to her god. She makes the sign of the cross to combat Cyprian's magic, and after this, no matter what dark magic Cyprian tried, none could distress Justina. Baffled by the power of the cross symbol and brought to despair by it, Cyprian tried using the cross himself, only to find himself freed from the darkness of his own magic. All of a sudden, he was said to feel overjoyed by the cross and immediately visited the church, compelled by Christianity and the joy it had brought him. Some stories have him ascend the ranks of the church, first as a deacon, then a priest, and finally a bishop. But many dispute his ascension to the level of bishop, where many believe he is often confused with the Bishop of Carthage, who was also named Cyprian, half a century beforehand. Both Cyprian and Justina, though, would not meet favourable ends. The Roman Emperor Diocletian would order the persecution of Christians across Europe, and both Cyprian and Justina were amongst the many who were seized and horribly tortured. When neither one of them renounced their faiths, even after grievous torture, they were brought before Diocletian, where they were both beheaded in the year 304. A Christian man named Theotistus witnessed part of the torture, and was compelled by Cyprian's ability to stay faithful to his beliefs. At Cyprian's execution, he ran over to Cyprian and was said to hug him, thus declaring himself as a Christian, or at least a sympathizer, which in turn resulted in him being killed as well. After the execution, their bodies were left unburied for six whole days. They would eventually be taken by Christian sailors to Rome, 
where they would eventually be laid to rest in Constantine's Basilica. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below about Cyprian and Justina. Do you believe the tale about Cyprian being a practitioner of the occult? And do you believe that such powers existed in the old ages? Perhaps they still do exist in some dark corners of the world. Or maybe the whole thing is just a made up fable, used to keep followers of the faith in line and to prevent one from straying into the path of the devil. Let me know your thoughts below and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. Do let me know who you'd like to see next in the Occult History Explained series. Until next time guys.